In this video, we'll write the electron configuration for copper and then also the Cu plus and Cu2 plus ions. Copper is an important one to understand since it's an exception to the rules that we use to write electron configuration, so you'll see it quite often. So for copper, the neutral element, that means it doesn't have the pluses after it. Copper on the periodic table, it has 29 protons. This is the atomic number, it equals protons. Because it's neutral, we have 29 electrons. So to write the electron configuration, I'm going to use this periodic table here. You can also use this chart. There's a link in the description how to do that. This is really a better way, though. It shows you the electron configuration, how it really relates to the periodic table. So we'll start with 1s. S can hold up to 2. We have 1s1, 1s2. We go to 2s, put 2 in there. 2p, p can hold up to 6. So we've used 10 electrons, we have 29, 2p to 3s2, 3p6, then we go to 4s2, and we'll have used 20. We only need 29. So after 4s, we go to the 3d. The d orbitals, they can hold up to 10 electrons. We only need 9. We have 20, so 20 plus 9. That gives us 29. So this is the electron configuration for copper if you follow the rules that we normally follow. Note that once we get into the transition metals, the 4s is most often written after the 3d. These electrons here will be the first ones that are ionized, so it does make sense for them to come afterwards. So we have this electron configuration for copper, which isn't correct. So let's write the correct electron configuration now. And to do that, let's look at the individual electrons in their orbitals. So to write the correct electron configuration for copper, we need to know this rule here. And that's that half-filled orbitals, these d orbitals, or completely filled d orbitals, are more stable than those with one electron less. So we have this d orbital up here for copper, and it's almost full. We have two electrons in each of these. This only has one. So if we could put one more electron here, this would be much more stable. The way we do that is we take this electron here from the 4s2, and we put it in the 3d9. So this is full now, this is more stable, and then we need to change these numbers up here. This becomes 4s1, and this becomes 3d10. So this is the correct electron configuration for copper. Remember, if they're half filled, each one of these has one in it, or they're completely filled, like we have it here with two in each of them, that's more stable. So for copper, this is the configuration. We can also write a condensed notation for this, and that looks like this, argon in brackets, and then we have 3d10, 4s1. For the ions, it's actually pretty simple. We're just going to remove electrons. So we have copper here. If we want copper plus, we just get rid of this electron here. Sometimes you'll see a zero written, and this is the electron configuration for the copper one ion, this copper plus. If we want copper 2 plus, we'll just take away another electron. We'll have to take it from the D now, and that becomes 3D9. So this is the electron configuration for the copper 2 ion, Cu2 plus. This is Dr. B with the electron configuration for copper, copper plus, and copper 2 plus. Thanks for watching.